All right, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to uh, Revenue Cat's first launch party. We're going to get going here in uh, just the next couple of minutes. We'll leave a little bit of time for uh, for folks to join. We're, we're right at the hour right now. Uh, first, let me start by just doing a, a brief introduction. Um, I'm Dan. Um, I'm one of the product managers at Revenue Cat. Um, I focus on our, our data features and our growth tools. Um, and we're going to spend a bunch of time today talking about those and a lot of other stuff that we've shipped over the last couple of months. The reason why we wanted to do this is one, to show you all what we've been working on and we're excited about, um, and two, to hear your feedback on it, to hear your your questions, your concerns, your thoughts. Um, before I joined Revenue Cat, I've been here for about a year and a half. Um, I spent my time at Teltech, uh, which is a mobile app portfolio. We built apps like RoboKiller and Tape Call. I, I ran the product team there for the last couple of years, which meant that I got to experience all of the really great parts of running subscription app businesses and all of the really messy parts. Uh, so the stuff that we build is, is really aimed to solve both of those things, right? To make it a little bit more fun and a little bit less messy. Um, so we're gonna be covering a lot today. Um, we've got uh, some brand new things that we just built during our hack week uh, that we're excited to show you guys. Um, we've got some new ways to get and use data from Revenue Cat that we'll talk about. Um, we're gonna go through our new support for StoreKit 2, talk about paywalls and targeting, some of the things that if you follow us on Twitter, you've probably seen us talking about a lot recently because we're really excited about. Uh, about those also too. So one of the, the new paywalls features that we're gonna be demoing, we need some volunteers for, some volunteer apps. Um, so if you wanna volunteer your app, go ahead and drop your apps, app store link in the chat. Um, and we, uh, we might use it for uh, one of the demos that we have later on. All right, um, so we're at 12.02 Eastern right now. We're gonna get started with some of the, the demos. Um, the first one that we're going to be showing off, uh, familiar face is going to be joining me, uh, Charlie, who's part of our, uh, developer advocate team. If you guys follow us on Twitter or have like scanned through our docs ever, you have almost certainly seen Charlie's face before. Hi, Charlie. Welcome. Hello. Hello. <laughs> All right. So first, uh, we just had a hack week last week. Um, Charlie, actually, let me ask you a question first. This was your first hack week with revenue. Cash. Yes. How, how was the experience? What would you, what would you rate? Oh my gosh. It was, it was so like, it was so fun. Like I've been part of hack weeks before and they're always fun, but the difference here is like, it was exciting in a way that it, this sounds cliche, but it's like exciting for our customers. Like there's so yeah. many cool things that either already came out or are coming out. Um, and of course some really off the wall, cool ideas too. So it was the the energy was electric uh to be sort of cliche there but it really was it was very very fun yeah i concur here here all right so let's uh let, let's jump in with a few of those um i you've got uh something you're going to show us that you worked on during hack week uh so let me let me, you take it away all right i'm going to attempt to share my screen here let's see if this works right you should see a iphone simulator is that what you see yep perfect Perfect. All right. So this was the Hack Week project that Josh Holtz and Will Taylor and I worked on. Um, mostly Josh and Will. I was relearning how to do a lot of React development during this, which was also very fun, um, <laughs> but very exciting. So this is uh, the Revenue Cat dashboard uh, in Mobile Safari. Um, probably everybody's familiar with the dashboard. Actually, I would assume everybody here is familiar with the dashboard. Probably most of you are like me and you refresh it too often on your phone whenever you're trying to keep up with what's going on. Uh, what many people might not know is that our dashboard supports the progressive web app APIs. Um, so this is the, the APIs that the web has to allow you to make your website more native-like. Um, and the way you do that in Safari is you can tap the share button down here and then tap the add to home screen button. I'm not gonna do that because I already did. Um, and the reason is because you'll have to re-log in uh, whenever you do that. So I didn't want you guys to have to watch me do that. But what you'll get whenever you do that is you'll see a nice little RC logo on your home screen, just like a native app. Uh, and when you open that, it is like a Chromeless sort of native like feeling experience. This is totally separate from Safari, even though it's using the Safari renderer. Um, and there's a couple changes here that make it a little more like an app. The first big one is it's its own state. So like it'll kind of be persisted whenever you close it and you open Safari, you can do whatever you want and then close that, reopen this, and you'll be back where you left off. Um, and there's a couple changes we made to, this is already a thing that we supported. There's a couple changes we made to it as part of our Hack Week project. So the first big one is uh, in a PWA on uh, iOS, 
pull to refresh isn't a thing because there's no Safari Chrome. So we added a little uh, refresh button that will show there when you're in this mode. Um, there's also some improvements to this little menu. This actually improves things for the regular Safari as well. If you switch tabs, it'll auto close, which is kind of nice. Um, and you'll notice like our charts fully work in here, which is super nice. All my save charts are in here so I can open my favorite uh, chart of all time, which is the layer cake chart. It looks a little silly in uh, portrait mode, but you can go into landscape, which I just realized was probably a dangerous thing to do in a live stream, but it looks like it did it okay. Well, um, perfect. Yeah, and you can like tap into here and you know see the breakdown of everything. So let's see, did I, is it upside down now? I think I did upside down. There we go, all right. Nice, nice. Um, so a bunch of little improvements here. I, I think this is a really nice experience. It's not, you know, like a fully native app, but it, it has literally everything that our dashboard allows you to do. Like I can go into my experiments, which I also check daily um, in here, for example. Uh, but that, something really exciting. Oh, go ahead. No, that that use case I think is exactly right, right? It's the it's the just I want to check in and see what's going on in my in my app right now, right? Like I'm sure we all have those moments during the day, and like making it as easy as possible to do that, like that's a win. Yeah, exactly. Um, but a really cool thing that we added as part of Hack Week, and this isn't publicly available yet, although I believe we're going to have a link in our follow up email that'll let you sign up to get access to it if you want to. Uh, but if you go into account settings and go into labs, there's this new uh, push notifications uh, section, which you can probably guess uh, what this is going to do. <laughs> but if you tap this subscribe in browser, uh, it will let you set up like native push notifications on your phone um, for all of our subscription events. And what's really cool here is, you know, unlike our Slack integration or Discord integration, you can control which events you want. So if you don't wanna get cancellation notifications, uh, you can turn those off. Or if you only wanna get cancellation notifications because you're a glutton for punishment, uh, <laughs> you can have those be the only ones that are on. Um, and what's really cool is these will show, I, I, I'm not gonna see them in the simulator here because unless I get really lucky and get a sale uh, at this moment, I do have a picture from uh, Will when we were testing this. This is kind of what they look like. But they have the RC logo on there. It's not like the Slack logo or the Discord logo. They're, um, they're bundled if you have your notification set to bundle by the Revenue Cat app, uh, as opposed to being mixed in with everything else. So they're really easy to kind of dismiss. I love waking up in the morning and just seeing a big bundle of like activity on my app that happened overnight uh, in Europe or wherever. And then, but then I can dismiss all those in one you know tap now. So. I think this is really cool. I think it's really exciting. Um, like I said, this isn't actually pushed out yet, uh, but if you want to get a sneak preview and give us feedback on what's working, what's not working, uh, there should be a link, I think, in the, the webinar follow-up email that, that will let you sign up for that. Nice, I love it. It's such a good, like, simple way to, like, get these, like, updates literally pushed out to you, right? Like, in that, that relieves a little bit of mental burden of you having to, like, think about it and go do something about it. Yeah. Yeah, and I didn't mention, but if you tap on one of those, it takes you straight to the uh, transaction page for that uh, user. So you can see, like, you know, this was canceled or somebody canceled their monthly or whatever. You can click on that and see their history um, for the different events that, like, their life cycle through the subscription um, events and kind of see what was going on there, which is which has definitely been interesting to for me to see already. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's awesome. Let's uh, we're, we're going to stay on this theme actually of how to like get data out of Revenue Cat and and pushed automatically to you. Um, before I go into that, I didn't mention before. If you guys have questions about these uh, demos as we're going, feel free to throw them directly in the questions section. We'll, we'll maybe see it if it's in the chat, but if you put it in the questions section, it'll jump to the top of the list for us, make it a little bit easier to answer. So uh, go ahead and do that if you have questions as we're going. Um, but on that on that same topic of like pushing data out from Revenue Cat, the kind of other side of that coin, right? Like push notifications of things that are happening in the moment are awesome. You also then might have a need to like see like at a high level, what does that all mean? What does that like wrap up to? Um, so I want to show you guys something else that we worked on during uh, Hack Week. Let me go ahead and share my screen this time. You're gonna get a little bit of an infinity view for a second. There we go. All right, so what I want to show you guys, we actually got a little bit of a preview for that uh, just a minute ago. Um, in this lab section of the dashboard, everyone has access to this new feature that we're calling performance summaries. 
Basically what a performance summary is, is a weekly email in your inbox every Monday morning that covers the key subscription metrics for your business that you can check and see one, what happened last week, two, how did that change versus the prior week? And then three, go click into any of those metrics and see the overview and charts if you need to dig in deeper. Um, so the way that works is very simple, right? I've got my two projects here that I'm already uh, subscribed to these emails for. As long as I'm subscribed every Monday morning in my inbox, I'm gonna get an email that looks something like this. So this is my weekly performance summary of the past week. Um, it goes through my revenue that was generated last week, my MRR as of the end of that week, any new trials that I generated, my active subscriptions as of the end of the week, and then even some conversion rates, like your initial conversion rate or your trial to paid conversion rate. Um, and what this number is doing next to it is just telling you how that's actually changed week over week. And so the way you might expect to use this is to jump in and say, all right, you know, everything's growing a little bit. That looks good. That looks good. Trial conversion rate jumped by a lot. You might then go dig into charts and understand if there was a particular segment that was driving that. New trials went slightly down. So same thing. You might click on that and load your charts and try to understand what was driving that behavior. But importantly, just like we were talking about with push notifications, like the real magic of this is that it's going to happen automatically, right? You don't have to think about it. You don't have to remember to check the dashboard in the morning. Every Monday morning, you're going to get this in your inbox and it's going to give you the quick summary of, of what is actually going on. Um, so we're pumped about this. Like I mentioned before, it's available to everyone now. If you go into the labs page and click on performance summaries, it'll be there. Um, the docs uh, show this as well. So if you search for performance summaries in our docs, we'll run through everything and even show you like the details of how each of those metrics is being measured and everything like that. Um, so we're excited for you guys to check that out and, and also to let us know what you need from it, right? Like what are the metrics that you care about? What are the other customizations you might be looking for? We'd, we'd love to hear all of that. Selfishly, I'm very excited about this one too. I like anything that caught, forces me to pull back a little bit from the daily metrics and actually look at the uh, sort of overall picture. Uh, it's very healthy. <laughs> yeah, totally. Can, can I ask you too then? All right. So your, your day job as a revenue cat developer advocate, you've also got your, your other job as the proprietor of dark noise. Are, are these two hack week features, things that you're actually using? Oh, can you, can you hear me right now? I can. Yeah. Yeah. You sound good. Okay. Okay. My, <laughs> this Sonoma just, switched the microphone to my phone which was sitting here and i don't know why it did, it's done this before so you're hearing my audio through my phone now for some weird reason anyway lucky break you uh, still sound great can you can you repeat the, the end of that question yeah as the as the proprietor of dark noise are you using these two hack week features uh i haven't set up the uh email notifications but the push notifications 100 percent. i've i would actually switched off i was using uh slack integrations before but they would like mix in with my, uh, with my other Slack notifications. And I found that like difficult to keep up with. And so I turned them off and I would just go in and look at them every once in a while. Um, but these, the, the ones through the PWA now, uh, because they're all grouped like that, I, they haven't been like a problem at all. Um, and I really, really like getting that regular reminder that human beings are downloading and using my app. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. All right, we got a uh, a couple of questions related to these in the in the chat. Let's just try to answer a couple of them quickly. Um, one that we got was, does this also display for in-app purchases or just subscriptions? I'm assuming that was for the push notifications. Correct me if I'm wrong, Charlie, but answer is yes. Uh oh, I think I did lose your audio. It just made another sound again. There you go. Uh, You're back. You can hear me. Yep. <laughs> I need to turn my phone off before I do these. Uh, <laughs> it's just sitting over in the corner. Anyway, uh, yes, uh, it should work for in-app purchases. It should work for any of the subscription events that you were getting if you're using any of the other, like the Slack integration or Discord integration. Nice, nice, awesome. All right, and then we'll just do uh, one more here. One of the other questions was, can we push that summary to a chosen channel on Slack? Answer is not today, but it's totally something that we're looking at too. Like that, if you imagine like email as a destination for that summary, we're, we're totally considering other destinations to uh, to send that to, to basically take that raw data and make it accessible elsewhere. Um, so no, not today, but hopefully on a future version of this, we can, uh, we can go talk about that. Um, cool, all right. Uh, we'll try to get to the uh, the other questions at a later time. For the sake of time, we're going to keep moving. Uh, Charlie, thanks a ton for for joining and showing us some cool Hack Week stuff. Yeah, thanks for doing this. This is cool.
All right. Thanks, Charlie. All right. Hi, Jens. Uh, so we're going to stay on this theme of ways to get data from RevenueCAD and use it in new ways. Uh, Jens, you run our product team. You're my boss. Hi. Uh, nice. You're showing us some other ways that we could get and use data from RevenueCAD now, right? Yes. Uh, if I can get my screen sharing to work. Um, I have been struggling with my browser. So <laughs> it's the magic of live demos. Yes. I'm only getting a spinner for some reason. Sorry. Ah, um, sorry, I'll try this again. Yeah, yeah, no worries. That sounds good. I do see one other question in the uh, in the chat too that I'll uh, just answer quickly. Uh, it was asked uh, to please add the number of new users in the charts. Totally something that we we hear loud and clear. Um, not not the easiest problem to solve, but a possible one. Uh, so yeah, definitely appreciate the feedback. Please keep it coming. Uh, not something that exists today, but uh, very much on our minds. All right. Jens, I see your screen, but I don't see you. You might have to hit the button to uh, to join the stage. Let's see. It's like you can, can you hear me too? I can, yeah, perfect. Okay, well, fantastic. Great stuff. I have to click allow so many times. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, um, so uh, welcome everyone. Uh, um, hello also from me. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about what uh, what Dan talked about about getting data, but also you know more broadly speaking, um, server side developer experience. What do I mean by server side developer experience? Um, things that we shipped that help you if you're interfacing with Revenue Cat from your own server from your own backend. Um, so um, some things that I'll be talking about is creating and modifying apps backend side, accessing overview metrics. There, it, this is really about accessing data. Integrating subscriptions and purchases from third party sources, um, which is in, in better right now, um, and more flexibly utilizing webhooks. So a bunch of interesting things. And I'll also try to live demo some stuff to the extent that you can live demo, um, you know, back inside things which tend to be a little bit drier than some of the things. <laughs> um, all right, creating and modifying apps. Um, so you can now create and modify apps through the REST API v2. <clears throat> if you haven't checked out our REST API in a while, um, we have our v1 REST API, which is basically what the SDKs use. And then um, a while ago, we started adding a new uh, version of the REST API that doesn't have all functionality, but it has some functionality that isn't currently available um, through the v1 API, including now creating and modifying apps. So if you want to do that, you have to uh, create a v2 API key that ha um, has the apps configuration read and write access. Um, and then you can make a post request to um, this endpoint projects slash project daddy slash apps um, with a JSON payload um, that contains the type of the app um, as well as some type specific configuration. Obviously you'll find all of that in the documentation, um, but let me now actually try and um, give you an illustration here. So I have this, this project here, which is called Launch Party. It right now has one app in here, um, which is an iOS app called Test. And now I will try and, I um, already created an, um, an API key here, and I'll try to make a request here. Oh, you can see this is the exact same payload that I had just uh, there just now. Um, and if I make this request, I get a response. And if I refresh this page here, you can see that now the app uh, test nice. in Google Play got created. So, um, you know, especially if you if you want some kind of infrastructure as code automation or whatever, you know, this can um, over time basically make make all of your you don't have to interact with the Revenue Cat dashboard at all anymore. You can just write write code and uh, you know uh, create things on on the Revenue Cat side. 
that was the first one. Um, the second one is accessing overview metrics. And this is really about um, accessing data uh, on the revenue catch side. You can now access the metrics that are shown on the overview page via the REST API. So what is the overview page? So just flip back here. That's this page, right? So these, these metrics that you see, obviously in, in this case, um, this one is a little bit boring because it has zero dollars in revenue, um, <laughs> but you know, the, uh, the, the, the REST API calls work the same. So uh, this also requires the V2 REST API key with the overview configuration read access. Um, and then you just call this endpoint here, um, project slash project slash metrics slash overview. So um, also making a, a example request here. Um, so you can see this is the JSON that you get back, um, kind of nicely formatted. You see that all of the um, all of the metrics are in here, including some metadata about when it was last updated and so on. Um, so yeah, you, like if you want to build your own dashboard, for example, you can now pull this information directly from our APIs. Um, let's move on to some things that are a little bit bigger in nature, integrating subscriptions and purchases from external sources. And this will be the more interesting demo because there I'll have to do a little bit more and not just, uh, and well, we'll see if it works. We'll see if it works, <laughs> if it doesn't. Uh, then I'll, I'll just kind of, um, uh, say that it's because it's in, in beta right now. So what is this? Um, it allows us to track status and payments of external purchases and subscriptions. What does this mean? And what is this useful for? Let's say um, you have subscriptions on PayPal or on Paddle or on some other third party subscription service. Right now, Revenue Cat does not support that natively, right? We do support Stripe on the web, but especially on the web, there's a million different subscription services. And um, right now, again, Revenue Cat doesn't support them all. And it's also unrealistic for us to ever support them all, which is why we've built this uh, external purchases API, which allows you to basically send us the status of these subscriptions from external sources and then use that for, to grant entitlements across platform in, uh, including external sources so again you know you have your paypal subscription you have that tracked in revenue cat and now you can grant access to an uh, you know an app user uh, a customer with a given app user id based on their paypal subscription it also supports events and integrations charts and all other functionality so you know you can for example show your revenue across all of the different platforms, app stores, Stripe, and any um, external purchases, um, external platforms as well. Um, this is currently in private beta with select app developers. If you are interested um, in, in using this, do reach out to us. We will selectively add additional folks to the beta or eventually um, launch this publicly. Right now, we're still kind of in the, in the trial phase. So um, let me try if this actually works. Um, so uh bear with me as we as we try this so i'm going back into the launch party project um and creating a new app and you can see that because this uh this project here is part of the of the beta program i now have this new external external source um app type here so i'm gonna um create something here I'll call it demo for launch party all right so this um, demo app got created, and I have an API key here um, that I can use to post um, purchases to this external purchases API. So I'm going to copy this key, and now let me try if this works. Okay, I need the API key there. Okay, um, so what you can see here is I have a whole um, JSON object that contains the status of an external subscription. Um, that I'm that I'm trying to track here, and I'm going to post this to this API, and I'll see if this works now. Yeah, it seems to have worked. Um, I've, I'm getting a, a purchase ID back, and now let me go to the overview here. I'm going to try and refresh. Yeah, so what you can see here now is that this test customer um, has a purchase um, and is a subscription of prod 1a to b 3c which is exactly the product id that i passed in here um and yeah you can see all of the events are here the subscription expires on a on a date that i passed in uh, i made this kind of a weekly subscription so it, you know all the all of the events work this one i didn't track any revenue for this one i could have tracked revenue as well uh, but just for the um for the sake of simplicity this is just a um you know 
just a bare subscription without any revenue. And again, the events have been generated, would have been dispatched to any integrations. This will show up in charts and so on. Um, so you can see how, you know, again, if you're using any platform that isn't currently supported or any store that isn't currently supported by RevenueCat, how this will make, make it easier to, you know, manage entitlement access and information uh, across all different platforms. Yeah, totally. This right. is awesome. What what I love too is like that that use case in particular, right? Of like you get the data in. There are all these different ways that you're already using Revenue Cat data. And now you just get that for free for this new source, right? Like you don't need to pipe it into Amplitude if you're using that for analytics. You don't need to go figure out how to connect it to your internal dashboard. You're gonna get it in our data exports. Like all of those extra steps that you have to do just go away because you plugged it into Revenue Cat and you already have all of that set up through us. Exactly. Data exports, you name it, right? It's, it's all there. Customer lists, uh, you know, you have it all in one place and you can like truly manage um, subscriptions and purchases across like your entire, um, you know, universe uh, with Revenue Cat. All right. Um, my last topic, more flexibly utilizing webhooks. Um, there's a bunch of things that are kind of rolling into one that we've recently shipped for webhooks. Um, so, you know, just, <clears throat> uh, I guess as an intro, what are webhooks? Webhooks are, uh, general purpose notifications that we can send to your backend, right? Where we just kind of make, a, um, make a call to a backend URL of your choice and send you all the event. So, um, again, a lot of changes that we've made recently wrapped into this. Firstly, adding multiple webhooks per project. It used to be that you can only have one webhook URL. You can now have up to five, I believe, um, you can filter by app and environment. So um, again, previously, every webhook for every project received all of the um, notifications, all of the events for that project. Now you can also filter it down to a single app and also to production and sandbox only. And you can also filter event types. Um, you know, so for example, again, uh, if you're using that for some kind of push notification service, maybe, and you're only interested in new purchases and renewals, you can filter that down right there. Um, and lastly, we also have a new event type subscription extended. Um, this again, you know, doesn't really directly relate to the webhook topic, but it's important for webhooks. Um, there's certain, several cases in which subscriptions can get extended. Most notably, um, both Google and Apple allow you to extend a subscription via their backend. Um, so, you know, you previously had a one month subscription, let's say, and then you're extending that by a week. Previously, we didn't send any notification about that. Of course, the updated expiration date was always uh, correct in our APIs, but you know, if you are using your own backend to kind of keep a copy of the subscription status, you might not have noticed that something changed. So now in these cases, we sent this new event type. All right, I'll just um, try and demo the first three here as well. So I'm going back to my launch party project um, and I'm gonna create a new webhook integration here. Um, so adding a new configuration and I mean, so, you know, for one thing that what you see here is that, you know, I can add one configuration, but I can just keep adding additional ones, but just kind of to demonstrate the filters here. Um, again, here I can now filter um, this to production and sandbox or production only and sandbox only. And really what this is very useful for is if you have your, if you have diff, uh, different backends for production and sandbox um, and, you know, a staging environment that you're using for sandbox testing, um, then you could just set up two integrations here. One gets only the production events uh, and goes against your production backend, and the other one only gets the sandbox event and, um, you know, basically uh, forwards them to your staging environment. Um, so that's, again, really, really useful in, in, in that very common setup. Um, and then again, you know, uh, filtering here, I could now filter this to the test on Google Play. Um, and by event type, I can then select, you know, again, if, I only, if I'm only interested in initial purchase and renewals, for example, then um, I would only get those here. And of course, I would add the web URL and uh, the, the header value. But, you know, uh, since I'm not going to save this now, um, you, you get the idea. All right. Um, that's, that's it from my perspective. Um, again, maybe I'll go back to, oops, not there. Uh, I'll go back to the overview slide that I had at the beginning here. If there's any questions about those, I'm, I'm obviously happy to answer them. Yeah, I love it. On the, the multiple webhooks in particular, like one of the other cases for that that we see all the time is like, you might just have different teams or different groups within your company that care about that data, right? Like a very common one would literally be you have some production need for getting the webhooks, right? For keeping track of who should have entitlements and everything like that. You're 
backend team cares about that. Your data team might also want those webhooks for a totally different reason, right? And like being able to manage those subscriptions separately, like saves a, a lot of heartache from you trying to manage that on the other side. Yeah, um, absolutely. And of course, previously you could have always like added one, uh, you know, one endpoint and then done the filtering and forwarding yourself. But it's obviously much easier if you could just kind of have it with a few clicks on our dashboard, um, set that up and, you know, we do the filtering for you. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you a ton, Jens, for, for showing off all of that. Um, as you guys have other questions, please feel free to keep adding them in the chat. Again, we'll, we'll get to as many as we can. Um, for the sake of time, we'll, we'll keep going. We've got one other thing to, uh, to show off. Thank you, Jens. Thanks. So as a quick reminder, later on in the, in the talk, we're going to get into some other things like uh, some new paywalls and targeting features. We're going to be talking about store kit too soon. Um, we've got one other uh, thing related to uh, kind of the data that you can use from Revenue Cat that we want to show you guys. Uh, Tina is going to join me, who's uh, one of our product managers working on our Cat Forms team, uh, the team that covers all of the different platforms that we care about. Hi, Tina. Hello, hello. Cool. So should I just kick us off, get started then? Yeah, go for it. Okay, perfect. So I will start by sharing my screen. I tested this early today, so hopefully no difficulties there. Hey, okay, cool. So I wanted to talk a little bit about offer codes and sort of the data now that you can get in RevenueCat related to Apple offers. Um, before I jump into sort of what's new with RevenueCat, disclaimer, not live demo. Um, sorry, everyone, but I hope it is still just as exciting. <laughs> so I'll spend some time um, just to make sure we're on the same page about what exactly is an offer. So to kick us off, a offer um, in Apple, there are three different types of offers that you can set up. First, there is a introductory offer, which applies to new subscribers um, to allow you to use your product's features either at a lower cost. With, there is promotional offers, which applies to existing and churn laps uh, customers. There is also offer codes, which applies to new existing and laps slash churn customers. This code can be a little bit different compared to the others, since they can be distributed through any digital or offline methods, such as email campaigns, flyers, and can be claimed either through a direct link or within the app. And with these three different offer types, they can either be pay as you go, pay upfront or free. So for the remainder of my time speaking here on this virtual stage, I'll be focusing on these last two offers, promotional offers and offer codes. So now that we're on the same general page of what a offer is for an iOS subscription, I'd like to kick us off into what's new in RevenueCat with offer codes. So I'm gonna stay on the slide for a little bit. We've pushed an update to enhance the accuracy of detecting prices for our offer codes and promotional offers. And this is one of the benefits unlocked by us utilizing StoreKit 2's API endpoints on the back end. And of course, this is just the beginning, but for my presentation, just focusing on offers. So we, with analytics, um, now that we're able to get more accurate pricing, this has also allowed us to provide additional analytics for you um, as well. So kicking us off with the first thing, on the customer event page, along with showing the offer code reference name uh, being displayed directly in the event data, we also now have pricing information as well and pricing information um, of the offer purchased. So this information is also sent downstream to other integrations such as webhooks where you can keep track of your customer subscription health. And I guess staying on the same topic of integrations, we have also recently launched a new scheduled data export template where offer and offer type fields are now available by default. Um, you can check out the docs there. I included a shortened URL for you to quickly um, head over there and check it out. But yeah, but now with scheduled data export showing these two fields, you can also utilize this to measure the performance of your offers in any way that you want, since it is just a raw data dump of your transaction data. You can transform it, make your own charts. Um, if we currently don't have charts that support any of your use cases, um, definitely feel free to check this out as well. So talked about charts for a little bit, and we also now provide a segmentation and filtering option in your charts, of course, again, by offer and offer type. 
Um, I have a screenshot here. No, this is not a real app. This is fake data, so disclaimer there. Um, and in this chart, uh, for example, in here, I did a segment by offer type. And this really allows you to understand like how are these offers really contributing to your business performance and as well as the revenue that it generates over time. So this example, we have like the revenue MMR breakdown of a nature transactions that had no offer, those are promotional offer, and those with offer codes. So definitely pretty exciting stuff um, to be able to supercharge and kind of see how is your offer data playing in the rest of your business and checking out directly at RevenueCat as well. I love it. This is so awesome. It, it, just to talk through like a couple of the ways that like, especially that access and charts can be so helpful. Like, all right, it's, it's holiday promotion season right now, right? Like hopefully you guys are trying like Black Friday promotions and, you know, holiday promotions and things like that. Um, on the other side of that, you're probably going to want to look back and say like, all right, like how much did that actually help? Right. And so like just being able to take like your revenue from November and December and segment that by how much came from offer codes or promotional offers is is great. You can you can go back to the the layer cake chart that uh, that Charlie was showing off before and filter that down to just customers that came from offers and see like, how do they retain? Like, do they behave as well as my standard customers do where I might want to run that same offer again next year or try something uh, in between? Um, like there are all sorts of like detailed questions where, that are just kind of tough to get the data for. Um, and we're hoping this makes that way easier. Yeah, I feel like especially we're doing any like win back campaigns as well for churn customers. Um, maybe there's a particular month that you ran this campaign you can also check directly in the charts too. Like how's that campaign doing? Um, even I don't have a screenshot of this here, but under if you select offer, it'll show like, for example, the offer code rec name or the promotional ID where you can track the individual offer itself as well. So definitely super cool. Um, just allows so much more analytics now with offers. So we've talked a little bit um, about the analytics you can now get in RevenueCat, but is this price detection automatic? Um, there is actually just one piece that you'll need to allow us to detect accurate pricing, and that is your in-app purchase keys. So if you head over to your app settings page, you'll notice that we've now made this field required. For apps that already have this key, no action required on your part. For existing apps that do not have this key, you'll just need to fill this out the next time you're updating anything in your RevenueCat app settings page. And I guess also in here is worth noting that once you do add in these keys, we will be able to update your customers' transactions. So if you had offer codes in the past, as we up those, update those transactions, we would backfill that information in our database for you to enjoy scheduled data exports and as well as your charts. Um, just note that any events that we dispatch, they will not be changing. Um, as in the event changing out, but we will have information in our database and available for you to use. But yeah, so detecting offer codes isn't the only thing that in-app purchase keys unlock, but this will also allow us to utilize StoryKit too, and also enhance the information uh, regarding transaction pricing and country details. Hope this provides some foreshadowing with what's coming up to next. Awesome. Awesome. Very cool stuff. This is also like a great example of like, there's a lot of uh, just kind of like grunt work, honestly, that goes into this of like making sure we are we are piped into the stores correctly enough to get access to to all of this information. Um, so yeah, like Tina was getting at, we're actually about to, to show off some more of that too. Uh, thank you a ton for joining us, Tina. Yeah, of course. Hey, bye. All right, so with that, let's uh, let's transition now to, to talk uh, in a little bit more depth about StoreKit 2, um, something that I'm sure you all have paid attention to, that we've been paying attention to for a long time and investing in to, to make it work flawlessly with RevenueCat. Um, I've got Mark joining us, uh, also from CatForms, from our uh, our team working on this. Um, Mark, you're kind of a jack of all trades, so I don't I don't really know how to like properly intro you, uh, but I hear you're going to show us about StoreKit 2. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Then uh, can you hear me? Yep, you sound great. Okay. So yeah, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Mark. I work on the CAD forms team here at Revenue CAD, and one of our responsibilities is to maintain the integration with the stores. Um, and today I want to introduce you our brand new support for StoreKit two. Um, well, first, StoreKit is uh, Apple's framework for in-app purchases that uh, the Revenue CAD SDK uses under the hood on iOS. And today we're introducing a new version 
of uh, the revenue cut is decay um, that runs entirely on a story kit two, both on the SDK and on revenue cuts backend. And you might be wondering why is this important? Uh, well, uh, Apple has been gradually deprecating a story kit one for the last few years, uh, with the last uh, big one happening uh, on the past WWDC in June, where they deprecated the backend API used to verify purchases. So really uh, switching to a circuit two is not really a matter of if, but of when. And we have uh, at Revenue Card, we've been running circuit two on our backend uh, for, for a while already uh, in parallel with a circuit two. And we believe that it is now ready for my more widespread uh, use. So I would like to show you uh, how easy it is to uh, try the new beta SDK and encourage you all to try it and uh, give us feedback. Awesome. Awesome. I'm excited. Oh. All right. So I have my app, uh, Magic Weather here, and I am using uh, Revenue at SDK, and I'm going to switch uh, to the new beta version. Uh, right now I'm going to switch to the branch, uh, but today we will publish the actual tag and the release with, uh, for the uh, beta version. You'll be able to use it. Don't worry, we will post much more information about this on the community forum and other places. So I'm going to switch to the new branch. And here's the code that I used to configure uh, the Ravenica SDK. I've been using this deprecated uh, flag that uh, this deprecated configuration option uh, to use the circuit too. Uh, I'm going to delete it. Uh, you might not have been using it. It's all, it's all right. But to enable the new circuit support, you just need to uh, call this uh, with circuit version and then select circuit two. Then run your app. And well, my this is my my weather app where I can check the weather and also can optionally change the weather. For this, I need to purchase an in-app subscription. So I'm going to just purchase the weekly because it's been really cold this week. So I want to change the weather. And, whoop, okay, one second. Let's, let's see if I can fix this easily. <laughs> the All right. The live demos. I think it worked. Yeah, that worked. Okay. So nice. uh, basically, as you can see, this, this is really easy. You just need to change this configuration, um, change the version of the revenue cut SDK, change the configuration method. And then also you need to make sure that in your revenue cut dashboard, you have your in-app purchase key configured, otherwise purchases will not uh, go through. Uh, you can learn more on the documentation. We will uh, link to this documentation on the uh, release notes and also here. And, but it's, it's really that easy. Um, we are excited to um, let you try it and let us know how it works for you. Thank you. Nice. I love it. Mark, can I ask you a question? As uh, putting, sure. putting your app developer hat on, what is, what is the thing that you would be most excited about to use StoreKit 2 for? Is it, the, is it the peace of mind, simplicity? Like what's for you the thing that's like, yeah, this is worthwhile? So mainly it would be feature proofing uh, my app and making sure that um, regardless of um, what Apple um, deprecates or launches, uh, my app is going to be ready for all the new goodies that uh, that uh, Apple is going to give us. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. And just like we talked about before with offer code support and, and lots of other things like that, like what Revenue Cat is kind of like automatically doing behind the scenes is monitoring all of the new information that Apple makes available through StoreKit 2 and getting that into the hands of developers as, uh, as quickly and seamlessly as possible. Um, Awesome. Thanks a ton for showing us this, Mark. Uh, there might be more questions that pop up as we go. So maybe, maybe hang out in the chat a little bit afterwards uh, if there's others that pop up, but thank you a ton. For sure. Thank you. All right. Um, so with that, we're going to transition a little bit. The last kind of like big section of, of stuff that we want to cover uh, is things around our new paywalls experience. Uh, we're going to talk through targeting as well. Um, we've invested in a lot of stuff there over the last couple of months, and we want to kind of show you guys how it works and some of the new features that we've been working on there too. Um, to join me with that, I believe Nacho is going to be uh, hopping on stage here. Uh, Nacho is one of our iOS developers uh, that worked on paywalls and the 
thousand other things. Revenue Cat. Hi, Nacho. Hi, everyone. All right. So what we're going to be doing, I'm going to show a little bit of how to actually go and create a paywall in, in Revenue Cat. But we also want to show you guys how easy it is to implement and some of the new things that we're doing there. Um, and, and Nacho will help me through that process. Um, all right. So let me go ahead and share my screen and we will jump into it. Window explosion for a second. All right. Uh, so hopefully you guys have all seen this already, but just in case you haven't, there's this new monetization tool section in our dashboard where we've got paywalls. Um, our paywalls feature specifically is a way to take kind of the existing offerings that you already have through Revenue Cat and to literally attach a paywall UI to them so that you can use Revenue Cat to load and control the entire UI for your paywall. Um, we aim to make this as easy as possible to go set up and build a paywall. So I'm going to just quickly show you how to go do that. Um, our paywalls are all modeled off of uh, a handful of existing templates. We're adding more to them all the time. So I'll just start with the latest one that we've got, this fifth template here. Um, and basically when you start, you'll have like this kind of got a preview set up here and you can go through and edit each individual item that's a part of this paywall. Um, so I'm, I'm going to make one for the uh, the launch party here. So I'll grab the the image that I set up to use for that. We'll let that load and I'll see that render in here on the header in just a second. Perfect. I've got my uh, my cats ready for a launch party. Um, and then I can go in and customize all of the content, right? So let's say, join us for our launch party. I can go and then change the coloring here either for light mode or for dark mode. Um, I'm happy with the setup for light mode. I can go into display settings on the side here and switch that to dark mode and say, all right, that looks good. I'm just going to go edit these now. Um, and I'm going to add a bunch of features to this list, right? So first, uh, we're going to say that our launch party is going to have a bunch of exciting demos. We'll show off some uh, some stuff for Tor store kit two. Store kit two features. And we'll get into new things like targeting. We're totally doing the uh, the cooking show here. I don't know if you guys have ever watched cooking shows before, but we've got a, a real finished, polished one of these that we'll show you in a second. But I want to uh, run through this fast and uh, and show you how to set up a paywall with us. Importantly, too, so this icon that's here is customizable. We've got dozens of different icons that you can pick to uh, illustrate your feature list. And then almost every color on this screen is customizable, right? So like for these, uh, these check boxes here, um, I've got my revenue cat red already loaded elsewhere uh, on my desktop. So what I can do is I can just go into this color selector, grab the color picker, go outside of this window and grab my red and set that there. Now I've got that set up for light mode. I'm gonna go do the same for dark mode. And there we go, I've got my revenue cat red there. Um, where this gets really powerful too is so like, all right, all of that content so far is important, right? It's how you're pitching your, your paywall to your customers. Um, but really where we see a ton of value in the ability to like remotely control this and change this whenever you want to is in things like how you're describing the packages that you're offering, which ones you're offering, what your call to action looks like. Like this is where a ton of like the A-B testing comes in to figure out like what's actually going to perform best for your app. Um, so we'll go ahead and set this up here too. Um, for the packages, we could do a couple of cool things, right? So first we can add however many packages that we want to for this paywall. Um, I've just got a monthly and annual right now, but you can add additional ones to here and you'll just keep scrolling down that list. If it's more than what'll fit on the screen, we handle all of that automatically. Um, you can change the default package. That's super important because that's the thing that's gonna be pre-selected when someone opens this paywall for the first time. Um, and the vast majority of customers that view your paywall are probably gonna pick the thing that you pre-select. So like definitely be intentional about that. Um, you could pick the package name that's used. I'm, uh, I'm good with offer period, so we'll keep that. Um, and then you could add details. What's really cool about the details, this is true on, on any aspect of our paywall, um, but you can also then add these variables that specifically control uh, different elements that are package specific, right? So like, just for example here, uh, the package details is this string. Um, and I want to show the price of the package, but I also, for the annual plan, want to show the equivalent monthly price to illustrate the discount. Um, so we've got a variable for that. It's called total price and per month. I can just pop that in. There we go. And I'm also going to let customers know that they can cancel any time because I want to make it as easy as possible to say yes. And everyone's going to see that, uh, those package details. You can also too then set something that's distinct if the customer is eligible for an introductory offer, which is really important, right? Like if you're offering trials or some other introductory offer, then you want to use your paywall as an opportunity to pitch that and make it 
really, really inexpensive or cheap to say yes to your paywall. Um, they're going to say try free for, and then the duration of your introductory offer might be a variable. So I'm going to go ahead and, and use a variable for that. Uh, we've got sub offer duration in here. So try free for, it's going to say 14 days or one week. Um, and then we'll grab our total price in per month again. So we got total price in per month. There we go. And then I can go into the display settings, switch that to introductory offer values. And now I see what a customer is going to see if they are eligible for an introductory offer. Um, as I scroll down here, let's make sure we've got the right colors again. So for our uh, selected box, we're going to use our same revenue cat red. Uh, let's do that for dark mode as well. That's a little low contrast. So I'm going to switch that to white. I can control again, all of those elements through here. Uh, that looks good to me. And now I've just got my CTA to finish. Um, so I'm going to have my call to action. If you don't, uh, if you're not eligible for an introductory offer to just be continue. Um, if you are eligible, we're going to say try free and subscribe. So I've got that in there. I'll switch to the same revenue cat red that I've been using. Cause I want to use that throughout this paywall. And there we go. I've got my paywall. Again, you can go through and change those display settings as well to check between light mode and dark mode and make sure that looks good. There are also then other ways that you can use this paywall, like you can put it in a footer or a footer condensed mode where revenue cat will still control the bottom half of this screen, but you can use the remaining UI to show any other marketing material that you want to say something else that one of our templates doesn't support. Um, but we'll show you more of that in a second. Let me go ahead and I'll just finish creating that paywall. Let me stop sharing my screen. Um, come back over here and see Nacho. Nacho, you're going to show us how to then go and actually put this in an app. Yeah. So that looked like a lot of work, but we literally created a whole paywall in just two minutes. Uh, so now I want to show the code part of the demo where we use that paywall. And uh, some of you are probably familiar. There's in iOS and Android that we'll talk about in a second. There's basically two easy ways to display it in really just one line. Uh, using Swift UI, we can say percent paywall if needed. Uh, with an entitlement identifier. So we can basically say whenever this screen is loaded, if we don't have the premium entitlement, we're going to show the paywall. Uh, but maybe we want a little bit more control, uh, maybe display the paywall when a certain event happens in the app, or in this case, we just have a sample button. We can also display a paywall view um, manually. If I launch the app, when I press this present paywall button, a full screen paywall, we see the paywall that uh, Dan just created, well, the finished version that we had already prepared. And um, uh, we launched us a few, a, few, there a few questions about this. We've had a beta for this. We've released this uh, final version uh, a few months ago. And since then we've been really busy with lots of improvements, optimizations, and adding a lot of really small quality of life improvements to paywalls. Uh, a lot of small things like uh, now you can automatically display a close button. Um, and uh, something I launched uh, earlier this week, for example, is all of our paywalls now support landscape mode. Uh, so maybe your app uh, supports all orientations or maybe you're working on a game that's primarily landscape. So now you can use all of our uh, five templates. Uh, look, they all look beautiful in landscape. Uh, and Dan was also showing this footer mode. So for those that are not familiar, uh, basically, no matter how many paywalls, uh, paywall templates we make and how beautiful they are, you might still want some extra control of what you want to show on your paywall. So I have one example here. It was made by our own Charlie uh, that, you know, it's obviously a, a very demo paywall, but it shows you could create your own design natively on iOS. Uh, but it's still a lot of work to be able to create the payroll part of this, uh, showing all the loading the packages, figuring out if the user is eligible for a trial, uh, handling errors, handling all the purchase uh, flow and everything. So in just one line, I can also include this footer. I'm going to make it condensed. Uh, you'll see in a second. Uh, in just one line, I can turn my payroll design that's showcasing my app and add all this cast, all the handling of uh, purchases under my paywall. And this condensed mode allows me to hide maybe the different packages if I want. And um, again, all this is remotely configured uh, with all the colors and everything that Dan uh, set up earlier. 
And it's also um, too late, so, if I could just yep. jump in for a second. That also then means everything that Revenue Cat is controlling, you can go A B test right from our dashboard, right? Like you still retain control of everything else about that paywall experience that you want to show that's tailored to your brand. If you want to remote control the packages to show how to describe them, what the CTA does, you do that on a dashboard, right? No code needed. That's right. And you can do that with this footer, but also by using uh, offering metadata, you could also remotely configure part of your custom paywall here as well and experiment with it. Um, so like I said, we've been doing lots of improvements. Uh, all these, these paywalls work on iOS, on iPad, on Mac with Catalyst. And I want to do one more, well, a few more demos. Um, we've been busy adding support for paywalls for other platforms. And one that we kind of quietly launched is uh, watchOS. Uh, so I have this, it's in fact, the very same cross-platform app uh, with the same button. And uh, now we have support for revenue cut paywalls on watchOS as well. This is the very same configuration, same colors, and it's a completely functional paywall on watchOS as well which I think is really cool. Um, but there's way more platforms than iOS. Uh, and you probably know we also released uh, support for paywalls on Android. But rather than doing the very same demo, um, something we've been busy at work is now that we have paywalls on both iOS and Android, we can allow you to present them using uh, cross-platform SDKs like Flatter or React Native. So I have the demo flutter up here with this uh, simple percent button. And uh, I'm going to call our revenue cut SDK and call this percent paywall method. And here I'm going to launch this same app on both iOS and Android. So we have Android there. and ios so it's the same flutter app uh just a demo app with a button and uh this is a very simple demo i want to show how just with one line of code as well in flutter and same in uh, react native we can present the same paywall on ios and now android and as a reminder these are both natively rendered on ios with swift ui on android with uh, jetpack compose and uh, they both use their own platform with animations and completely functional uh, in each of the platforms. Uh, so you probably know, you might have seen we launched the beta for Flutter and React Native uh, paywalls a few months ago. And uh, I guess kind of exclusive announcement here on the launch party. Uh, I want to say we're finally going to release this, uh, the final version or the initial stable version uh, early next year. Uh, I think there was a question about that. So. Flutter and React Native paywalls are coming early next year. And um, I guess as a follow-up with that, uh, just one last demo about paywalls. Um, you know, our developers know there's, these days there's many ways of making uh, mobile apps. Uh, we have uh, mentioned two of them, you know, there's native, there's uh, a capacitor, uh, many other ways of making mobile apps. But there's one more that's uh, becoming really popular these days. Uh, just a quick sneak peek of uh, something that uh, uh, Thesar and Tony, two of our other SDK developers, uh, our engineers worked on during our hackathon. And that's uh, our upcoming SDK that's coming early next year as well, which is a Kotlin multi-platform SDK. Um, just a quick sneak peek. Um, for those that are not familiar, it's basically a way to make mobile apps and sharing the code using Kotlin and be able to create a both iOS and Android app uh, using Kotlin. And this SDK is going to expose the uh, both the native iOS and Android um, SDK. So you're going to be able to use everything you're familiar with, get the customer info offerings, as well as uh, presenting these uh, native paywalls on both platforms. But again, you're writing one um, running your app in one language once, and uh, you're able to, for example, present paywalls on both platforms automatically, which I think is really cool. Okay. That's so good. That uh, that demo of uh, being able to show the iOS and Android paywall at one time, I think that's maybe the like third time that I've seen that, and it still gives me like a little bit of chills each time. Like, it's so exciting. Like, what's what's so awesome about it, too, we keep going back to this case because it's really the one that like gets us so excited, is that you're then taking the process of like 
launching an app, building a paywall and going and optimizing it and making it so, so simple, right? And like, there are dozens of like simple little changes that you can test and try on your paywall and go see if they help you make more money. And to be able to do that at like such little effort, like that's a huge unlock, right? Like that's the kind of stuff that gets us like really, really excited is that it's making it painless to grow your business, right? Like that's what we're trying to do. All right, so let's do this. Um, we got one more paywalls thing to show. Uh, Andy, I am sure you are hanging around here. You wanna join us uh, on the stage and we'll we'll do our last paywalls focused, uh, focused demo. Hi everyone. Uh, yeah, so I'm here for the last one. And um, the, so this one is coming off of a Hack Week project and it's definitely not at the same level of polish as everything else. But uh, just here to tell you about what I did. Uh, so the thinking is when you create a paywall, uh, even though we've sim simplified the process quite a bit, uh, it takes you a, a few clicks to get a feel for what it would, it would, what it would look like in your app. So uh, what I did was to create a way that uh, we can uh, create a, a paywall for an app uh, very quickly. So let me see how to screen share if I can remember how to do this. There we go. Um, okay, so this is our current dashboard. You're all already familiar with it. So let me show you what I added uh, in a preview build here. I added these uh, very ugly, I promise we'll get designers on this before shipping. Uh, <laughs> I added this new field here uh, for your app store URL. And so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and copy and paste one of the ones that I saw in the chat. Uh, and get started. Basically, this adds this new create with AI uh, button. And what it will do is it will go and try and understand the app, understand the features, get a feel for the color palette, uh, what things you would put behind a paywall. And uh, it will basically generate the whole thing for you. Now, while this loads, I uh, did this already for a few of the apps in the chat. If I didn't do it for your specific app, I'm sorry. <laughs> I drive, but we got a lot of examples very quickly. So here's one for lines of Zen, which I think is uh, pretty good. Uh, you can still refine the colors, of course, uh, but you know, I've already generated an image that seems reasonable. Uh, it even supports uh, variables in there. Uh, it supports, uh, so you can see what it's doing under the hood. Uh, it figured out a few of the possible um, features that could go in there, uh, some dark mode uh, setup, of course, you know, from the idea is to provide a starting point. It's not the whole thing. You would go in and do more work there, but that's kind of uh, what it looks like in a nutshell. Um, and then what, what I also added here is this uh, translate with AI uh, beta button, which uh, you can go in and select a language. Uh, let's select one that I actually speak so I <laughs> can see that the translations are good. Um, so when you select a language, uh, when you get this, uh, default uh, placeholder text. So don't pay attention to that. What will actually translate is the text that we got uh, initially. So I'm going to go ahead and try this out. And this will take a little bit to load. Uh, in the meantime, here's what uh, got generated for Vo and Voice Record Pro. Um, now, yes, the colors can probably be improved, but I did figure out like, you know, a lot of the features that, that go in there. And uh, one more interesting thing that we can do here is I can show you here's a live feed of my uh, of my phone. So I'm gonna go, I'm go ahead and scan that QR code that we have there. And um, boom, you can see it right there in, in your phone uh, very quickly. And uh, you know, supports dark mode. I didn't check what the dark mode looked like for this one, but fairly reasonable. Uh, I would maybe change the colors up a little bit, but uh, I think it got a pretty reasonable result. Um, oh, here's, by the way, our Spanish translation for the one we were just generating. And uh, so we can check what it looked like in English. Spanish is good. Um, I went ahead and tried this out on a few of the apps that we have there. So uh, here's Aloha uh, Planner. Here's uh, Capit. For Capit, I actually went ahead and generated a few nice. translations. So uh, you can see you know, English, Spanish, Chinese. I can't verify the, the uh, <laughs> accuracy of these ones, but um, 
And then I, I tried out a few others, Touchgram for Instagram, uh, for uh, iMessage, sorry, uh, Savvy Navi Boat Navigation. This one looks really gorgeous. I love the, the image. Um, and so that's kind of the, the feature in a nutshell. Um, it's still quite hot off the press, as in the Translate with AI uh, button I added this morning. Um, so, I, so I don't have an exact ETA for when we will actually get this out, but uh, the idea is to, to get it out uh, to everybody and have everybody at least be able to use the, the auto translate uh, functionality, which uh, is a big time saver. I love it. What's so cool there too, is like you, you hinted at it a couple of times, right? Like, yeah, the AI is probably not going to get to like a perfect paywall that you would want to ship. Maybe it will, you should give it a try. Um, but if it doesn't, it gets you into like that inspiration mode, right? Like I, I have certainly done this before where I have an app and I say, all right, I, I know I should test something on this paywall, but like, I don't quite know what, like sometimes you just need like a fresh look at it to say, oh, and you know what? I would, I would slightly change that image or here's the feature list that I think makes sense. Right. But because you're starting from something like those ideas come faster and you can then go test that painlessly. Absolutely. Awesome. All right, let's um let's try to tackle just a couple of questions here. Um, I saw we got to a bunch of them in the chat already. Um, let me actually, I'm going to grab this one, and there's one that we answered in the chat too that kind of have the same answer. Someone was uh, asking, how do we incorporate Lottie animations into paywall templates? Uh, this question is about having different feature lists for different packages. I, I think the meta answer here is that one, we're kind of like regularly working on adding new templates and new flexibility within those templates to the, the paywalls feature today. So first keep telling us the things that you need and, and we'll make sure to get those cases like kind of properly supported in the, in the product. But two, one of the real like magical parts about that footer view that we were showing off is that it basically lets you do any of this, right? Like, of course there's trade-offs, right? You're then still going and laying out the, uh, the layout of the screen, however you want to. Um, but with the footer view, you can then control the rest of it through, through revenue cat very easily for like Lottie animations in particular, that's like the painless way to do it right now. And like Nacho was getting at earlier, you can then even couple offering metadata into that and say, all right, the animation that I want to reference is. A or B or C, and then go change that from our dashboard if you want to. Um, so there's yeah, one other I question. There quickly. Oh yeah, go for uh, it. Just the, the right to left languages. So yeah, you might've noticed that in the dashboard, uh, right to left, no, left language still looks left to right, uh, but in the device, it renders correctly. Uh, we've been prioritizing like getting the end user experience right first and foremost, and then uh, making sure the dashboard kind of reflects that. And so as of right now, the dashboard uh, looks incorrect for that, but the mobile app you can test out and it will look correct. Yeah, that's why I think part of uh, Andy's demo that he kind of climbs really quickly, I think is going to be really useful is that ability to see the paywall um, directly on the device. So that that's always going to be 100% what the users are going to see. And that's going to be coming out um, early next year as well, hopefully. Awesome. awesome. All right. Thank you guys. As folks have other questions about uh, paywalls, feel free to keep throwing them in, in the chat. We've got a bunch of uh, people around who'll be able to answer them. Um, in the meantime, we're going to transition to one other kind of paywall adjacent topic. Uh, so thank you guys. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to ask Josh thank to you. join. Josh is around somewhere. Uh, this will be kind of our, uh, our last big demo and then we'll, we'll do a little wrap up after that. There you go. Hey, Josh. All right. Hey, how's it going? Very good. Very good. Happy Thursday. Welcome to the launch party. Thank you. It is, it, it, it is Thursday. I was not aware. So that's <laughs> always good to know. Okay. Uh, now that it's Thursday, we can talk about targeting. Uh, so I'm just going to share my screen right away because that's the exciting stuff. So, yeah, let's do it. Uh, share screen. Entire screen. Okay. Maybe I'm going to, I'm going to ask one quick question in the chat. Cause we have to confirm Chris Wu asks, isn't that the deep dish guy? Uh, and, and yes, this, I say yes, this that is, is the, the deep, deep dish, dish guy. guy. Yes. Yes. That's me. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, besides deep dish, which is the conference that I host, uh, I worked on targeting, uh, for a good portion of this year. Uh, so paywalls is cool, but sometimes you actually don't want to show the same paywall to every single customer that you have. Uh, so our new targeting feature, uh, helps with that. So, uh, I have this app over here that I have one paywall right now. 
Uh, it is my default paywall. It has two subscriptions in it. Um, but not every country uh, allows auto renewing subscriptions. So we're actually going to create a rule uh, for India for a for non non subscription paywall to show. Uh, so I have paywall already created. So I'm going to go into targeting over here and create a new targeting rule called non subscription paywall. Uh, I can choose between different uh, four different dimensions here: country, app, app version, and our SDK version. For this one, we're going to do if the country is any of, and for this example, we're just going to select India and then go to our non-subscription paywall. Uh, so if, if any customer matches this description, it's going to show the non-subscription pay, non-subscription offering, which has my non-subscription paywall attached to it. And I'm just going to make this live. So I'm going to go over here and we can see in the live section that I'm going to make this bigger, probably live section. Uh, that there's one rule here, and if the country is in India, it's going to show non subscriptions. Otherwise, it's going to show my multiple subscriptions paywall. So I'm going to go over into my example now, uh, just to show that I'm still in the US and it's going to show my multiple subscription paywall. It's, we're going to do this uh, in Xcode with the store kit configuration file. You can actually change what your default storefront is. So it's gonna be maybe hard to read, but I'm gonna change my default storefront to India. And then I'm gonna, I have to rerun my app in order to get that, that uh, storefront in there. And now I have this new paywall for the, uh, for India, which is just one single lifetime purchase. Um, so this is just one example of uh, how to use our country targeting. We have a few other variations of targeting. Uh, this next one I wanna do is I don't actually like my paywall that I was using. I wanna try a new paywall, our template five, which uh, Dan and Nacho showed uh, previously. So I'm gonna call this one my like feature list paywall. Again, I already created this one. Um, I'm gonna show it for whoop, if my app version uh, is greater than 1.1.0. And then I'm going to have it, show, I actually have it called standard 2023, terrible name. But uh, now if I click save, I have a new rule here. And it says if my app version uh, is more than one, more than or equal to 1.1.0, I'm going to show the standard paywall. Uh, otherwise, it'll show the default one again. And targets get executed from top down. Uh, so the India one has priority first. Um, if they're not in India, then it'll show my uh, feature list paywall. Otherwise, it'll show my one that we already saw. So if I kill this app and run it again, uh, it's actually going to show India still because I didn't change my storefront. So we're going to go back in here, go change my storefront back to the United States, rerun the app again so that it knows what storefront I'm in. And we're going to have my feature list paywall right here. Uh, so now anybody who has my newest version of my app has this new feature list paywall. Uh, but there are some times where like you don't want to actually work and have things change. So like I'm going to be on vacation for the next two weeks, but I want my paywalls to change um, to match the holiday season and New Year's. So we just recently re recently released uh, yesterday uh, scheduled targeting. So what I can do is I can actually create a a, a new rule. I'm going to call it New Year's Eve. Uh, I'm going to have it just before all of my apps. And then it's going to show the New Year's paywall. And instead of having my paywall go live, I can go down to the schedule tab down here. And uh, we're going to have the uh, paywall go live on December 30th. Uh, as a little warm up to New Year's, and then we're going to have it end on, and then we'll go January 3rd. And click OK, and we're going to get save. And now we can see that my New Year's Eve rule is in the schedule tab. Uh, if we go over to live, it's still the two that were already there. Um, the reason that it's in scheduled and not live is because nobody's actually going to get this yet uh, since it's not that date range. 
Um, but I realized that I forgot to do my winter sale paywall. So we're going to do one more here. Do the same thing. Just show it for all of my apps. Go grab the winter holiday sale one. And we're actually going to have it go live in like two minutes here. Um, so we'll send the end date first. We'll set the end date on like the 26th. What time was it? 12. So this is in UTC. So I got to do some math now. 12. Okay. So that's going to be be 6 p.m. This is hard. Okay. We're going to go 617. This should, this should do it. Okay. So we go back over here. I have two scheduled ones now, but one thing that I need to do is I need to go reorder the rules. So when you reorder your rules, it'll show both live and scheduled <clears throat> so that because when your scheduled one goes live, it becomes live. Well, self-explanatory, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to have the India one stay on top and we're going to have New Year's Eve and winter sales uh, be above the featureless paywall that we just created. Because basically what so, you're doing there is you're saying my sales are going to take precedent over the, the other stuff that I, that I want to target by. Correct. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, otherwise, the feature list would just always show. So we definitely don't want that. So we have one minute to kill. So we're going to go back into scheduled here. Uh, we have some options for, for scheduled. Uh, you can make it live right now if you want. You can make it inactive. You can duplicate it or you can delete it if you don't want it anymore. Uh, Let me also mention go too. back into here to prove... Oh, so yeah. you've, been, you've been showing our paywall so far. You can also do this totally with your own paywall as well, right? Like you can use this off of our existing oh. offerings model. doesn't have to be our paywall. We're just the, the brain controlling what's going to get shown. Correct. Yes. I'm just not good at making my own paywalls. So I'm using our own SDK <laughs> for them. Uh, we have like maybe 30 more seconds here. One minute was not enough time. Uh, but if we go back over here, what's going to happen in... That's it's, all right. Let me, let me mention one other thing too, which soon. is yeah, you go that uh, the country use case that you were calling out before, right? Like India not supporting subscriptions. And so you're just doing an, an in-app purchase. There are also tons of other cases like that where you might just want to like localize based on what works in each market, right? Like you mm -hmm. might find that a simpler paywall works better in, in one market than another, that like the features that you want to call out are going to be different or even just Correct. the way that you describe and pitch the product, right? Like there's so many little permutations like that, that you don't know how folks in different situations are going to respond to. And each of those can be optimized on. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So now if we go live, we'll see, here we go. So our, Winter sale now says live and it'll go until December 26th. And if I go back over into my app now, we're going to kill it and restart it. We should have a winter paywall. So that is, uh, I think all the targeting that, uh, we wanted to, we wanted to touch here. I love it. I love it. I'll just mention too. So we're talking about like, you know, being able to like make these changes on the fly through the dashboard. You could also then, go into experiments and target a particular app or a particular country, run an experiment on two different offerings and figure out which one performs best in, in that country on that app, then go set up a targeting rule to serve that audience, that offering, and go do the same for other audiences or keep trying to optimize that audience. Um, there's, there's kind of limitless ways that we can use this. Uh, Josh, thanks for, for running through a, a bunch of those. We had, we had kind of a hard time narrowing down the list to show because there's, thousand permutations it's so hard that, that developers might yeah. use. all right thanks so much totally totally i have uh uh let's just do a couple of quick questions before we um wrap that up um i saw the question for in what order would the schedule be executed top to bottom answer is top to bottom right so like what you see on the screen is top thing is going to get executed first for any customers that match it and then we'll go down uh that list we also too uh, i think there's at least two different questions here about user properties. Yeah, we'll just grab this one. Uh, we have heard the feedback loud and clear on the on the interest in using custom properties for targeting. Um, it's definitely something that we're looking into. Um, you know, can't promise dates or nature of a solution or anything like that, but we, uh, we totally hear the feedback. And I think too, like it, it becomes really powerful when you can tie in that ability to target, not just with things that RevenueCat is aware of, but things that are very specific to your business, right? Like you can imagine that being used for the you know, customers that you know are particularly high value or care about this feature versus that one. Um, so that personalization is definitely something that's on our minds. Um, feel free to keep reaching out to us too with the different ways that you might be interested in using targeting because that's, that's very helpful feedback for us to prioritize. 
Um, all right, wrapping up here. I got one more thing I'll show you guys. Not a uh, a demo, but there's tons of other stuff that we've been uh, working on that we just didn't have a chance to uh, to show today. Um, so hopefully this is this is large enough to see. Um, but in other areas of the business, we've been working on things like how to make our experiment results more useful for you guys, um, like having fresh test results for a full year after an experiment ends. We started sending this automatic alert if an experiment is performing poorly. That way, if you start a test um, and you're not sure whether it's going to go well, you just know that Revenue Cat is going to let you know if something starts performing poorly. It goes back to that same thing we talked about before of getting the information automatically pushed out to you. Um, we just shipped a subscription status user attribute for a bunch of our integrations that make it a lot easier to build CRM campaigns off of that data. Um, we talked a bit about kind of some of the store features that we've been supporting recently. A new one is we now support automatic refund detection for Google Play, which wasn't the case in the past. Uh, we built a Discord integration so you can get the kind of that same set of push notifications you saw from Charlie earlier, uh, just piped directly into Discord, just like you've been able to do with Slack in the past. Um, and there's tons more besides what I've been able to uh, to cover here. Um, thanks a ton for spending the time uh, joining us today. Uh, we'll keep doing more of these in the future. Um, check out our docs where we've got uh, information on all the stuff that we've covered today. Follow us on Twitter. We talk about just about everything like this that we ship. Uh, so if you want to get it, the, the latest and greatest, that's the place to do it. Um, and until then, if you have other questions, feedback, uh, there are a thousand different ways to uh, to reach out to us. So please do that. Uh, thank you all for, uh, for joining us today. I think we'll wrap up there and, uh, have a happy holiday.